Welcome, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Galactic Ambassadors podcast. My name is Julia Balaz, and today I'm joined by Joyce van Nispen, our recently certified quantum soul guidance practitioner, joining us from Netherlands. And so I'm so glad that Joyce can offer galactic astrology soul reading sessions, not only in English, but also in Dutch language. Is that right? Welcome, yes, Joyce. Yes, thank how, you. How are you feeling today? Ah, oh, very good. Thank you. I'm so glad. Well, before every podcast, I take time to review the certification documents uh, again, where each practitioner submits three practice clients and detailed um, overview of how the uh, client session went. And my goodness, some you know, with some of these, and especially with your joys, I feel like I want to share it immediately with the public because the stories are, are so incredible, such high value of information coming through. And also with you, I feel such a high sense of integrity and um, just taking this work with such importance, making sure that the information you bring through is helpful, not damaging in any way, but really offering very high perspective, helping your clients understand the game of polarity, but from a peaceful, centered um, high vibrational state. So I just felt truly inspired and really expanded in my own consciousness after reading your your <laughs> session. So um, there's really oh, special here. So nice. I'm really, really grateful that you are guided to this work. And I'm really curious to learn your story about your connection to spirituality. When did you become aware of your maybe extrasensory perception and when was it when you kind of actively said yes to this? Well, there was a, a big difference between um, all what you just said and actually saying yes. I remember, I don't remember much of my childhood memories or things like that. So it's more about from the age of 15, 16. Then it hit really, it, it was really bad. It was really frightening. I remember even when I was 19 and I was living with my boyfriends and I was, and when he was not at home, I was actually on the couch with a knife. So afraid. So terrified. It was so scary. Yes. And are you talking because, about the awareness of the invisible yes, world? Yes, there was something in the house. Yes, which was actually in the house. It was, it was a very old house and it was oh, there yeah. for a very, very long time. And it wasn't, it wasn't friendly. Mm. So I know all about scary shit. Um, and then after a while, I went traveling as well. And then it uh, to to Asia and then it calmed down. So it was more in a, a quiet uh, sense. And then my son was born. And then I had the choice because he could see and I could choose either to deny it, although I saw it as well, or I could help him deal with it in a good manner for all, um, not only for me and the son, but also for the one who was still visiting or just had an accident or things like that. Yes. So then I decided to actually, well, get on with it. And the next thing, Thing that was my daughter and I didn't understand anything from her she was like a, a creature from a completely different well, galaxy to me I couldn't understand how she was behaving why she was behaving that way and so I started to uh, get into hand analysis simply to understand her and that opened uh, a whole new world because I was a bit like, okay, it's either good or it is wrong. <laughs> yeah, so I was a, a big time polarity. And that taught me I had the willingness to meet all different kinds of cli clients from all different kinds of perspectives and, and, and actually seeing the other person having a conversation, not about what it is, your status or everything, uh, but 
exactly seeing it from their point of view. That helped me grow a lot. Wow. I'm so happy yeah. that we have um, hand analysis um, coming to the podcast recording. I've been you know, curious about that since my teenage years, uh, I had access to books that were showing some of it and then it just kind of left my life. And now uh, my curiosity is taking me back to it. So I'm so glad when I was looking at your website, seeing that you offer this as a service, not only to read, um, you know, offer hand analysis, but also teach others how to, how to learn that. Yes, we have like uh, I'm not teaching the basic anymore because I've written a book now, so everybody can do that for themselves. Mm -hmm. But I really like uh, students who've been doing it for a lot of years and they are doing it for themselves and we study and things like that. So yesterday, for instance, was was as a at a class, there was one actual hybrid, hands of a hybrid from Zeta and human. You don't see that often, but it's like, Oh, okay, this is not completely human. <laughs> How amazing that you are able to yeah. pick up on that. and Yeah, and not that. only me. Mm. It is the good thing that this, uh, other students are also like, hmm. <laughs> oh, my God. How exciting yeah, that, is. that is such really traditional amazing. ancient modality as a palm reading is also evolving through the galactic awareness. Yes. Function. I want to dance right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah, and it's also good now because of the galactic i can uh, let other uh, students know as well what the story is and uh, what is happening and things like that so they're not scared or uh, whatever so in that way they get to know this whole different spectrum of not just hands but actually oh my god more information oh wonderful well if we can um go back a little to your experience with the unseen when i look at your galactic astrology chart it's interesting how this week you're the second certified practitioner with a crooks alignment and also the algorap corvus alignment and another validation that these stars bring very strong psychic abilities and study of the occult subjects such a beautiful manifestation how you cannot not do it your, your life will simply take you there. no it, yeah you will get thrown uh, into it mm -hmm. and the good part for me was actually that i uh when all the scary bit was done it was okay would you yeah. say when you stopped resisting it it started becoming less and less scary that there was a oh. no no. no. So what was the shift that helped you feel safer in the experience? Well, that was actually, the, um, it's a bit strange uh, story and I don't know. Um, Please do. But there was, um, I already was acquainted with my uh, my supreme guide. Yeah. So I always, and I was, was very much acquainted with him. And then all of a sudden we got a, a visitor from somebody who left one of the houses and he, in the middle of the night, he pretended to be, actually. He took the shape of, of my guide and it wasn't him. And that was somebody who was trapped since the Second World War. So it was after that frightening bit, I decided to do it differently. And we had to go to our neighbors for a party and the children were quite young. And I asked him, Please look after my children. I give you the responsibility to look after my children. And he did. And then after that, I said, thank you so much. Are you willing to leave now? Can I help you in another way to leave Earth and let go of all that is holding you here? And he did. And the funny thing is there was this clock in the room in in the in the kitchen who had these eyes when it goes like this and the eyes go like that mm -hmm. and as soon as he's left the clock stopped oh wow goosebumps uh i think about two years later or something they started again so i said okay you just come and look yes and then it stopped again wow <laughs> so actually by giving him um uh, the trust it changed mm -hmm. yes 
Beautiful, beautiful story. So previous the experiences that were really difficult and haunting, we are just for the clarity of of the viewers. We you were tapping into the trapped spirits in, on the other side who were carrying very heavy, dense energy that you were picking up on to the point of yes. really being terrified because they themselves um, really? were yes. likely stuck in that state. So yes. Mm -hmm. yes. my heart truly goes out to any child and teenager that is picking up on these energies and is not mm. believed by their environment and they are really yes. truly they, they don't know what to do it's um i i look forward to our society evolving more and more for this to be more of an open conversation where we can support an, children from early is, on in these experiences mm -hmm. it is a very necessary one i can't yes. wait for the day when we discuss these things in school setting you know it, yes. how to handle these energetics. I really hope that will come within the next decade. Yes, and I think one of the most important things uh, that learned me as well, it's not personal. With these yeah, they're, simply, they're simply lost. So I, I'm glad that I decided, um, um, well, to, to handle things and to teach my children as well. Mm, really good. Yeah. What, so you discovered then Pam... Artistry, is that what it's called? Palm, palm hand analysis. Okay. So, you, so you've discovered hand analysis. It yes. Did it help you to get a better understanding of your daughter as first? Oh, very much. Every, every human has his own experiences. And based on that, it gets a view on how the world is working. But somebody else has a completely different experience. So they view the world in a completely different manner. And in the hands, you can actually very easy, almost after they're born, you can actually uh, see what ingredients they have on their character, on how they perceive things. Yeah, that's very handy. Amazing. That's so yeah. great. Wonderful. One thing that captured my attention on your website with regards to that was that when you, you know, a good palm reader can predict the way you die or when you die, yeah. that in yeah. fact, it's it's bogus because our everyday choices are shifting timelines constantly and our lines change according to our decisions that we make, the free will, exactly. um, the choices that we have. Yes. The only thing that is permanent are the uh, demotoglyphs, so these on, on your fingers. And sometimes you find them, and that's why Scotland Yards and FBI mm -hmm. want them as well. Mm. Because these won't change. No. It's also the last thing when you die that will go away in the hands. Interesting. Oh, yeah. We, we're gonna... And there's nobody who has the same. It's yeah. unbelievable. Eight billion <laughs> people. Such a small space. Yes. It's fascinating. Yeah. yeah. And you have them on your feet as well, but... I'm not really into feet. Mm -hmm. um, well, I'm excited to learn more um, by exploring your, your website and your offerings. Okay, so with that, is there other service or modality that you've explored after the Palm analysis? Well, before that, I also uh, did tarot. At that time, I was really like hand analysis. This is something really you can touch, you can grip, it's it's there, there's no hocus pocus. So it's for me it was important that people learned about themselves in that way. With Tarot, we don't know how it works. So <laughs> uh, you can't explain that scientifically or it's, it, 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 what happens, happens. Uh, but after that Tarot came back, I was thinking about rituals and what I could give my daughter for uh, a ritual for going into, uh, well, womenhood, because we don't have any rituals anymore. And I knew she was really into everything with nature and things like that. So I thought, okay, then I need to do a look at witchcraft, uh, which I was, mm, uh, then I found um, a witch who was really down to earth, um, no hocus pocus, um, and we clicked very well. And then my mother joined as well. So then that became a part of 
learning and also teaching about the moon and uh, nature and the cycles and all these kinds of stuff. Beautiful. Yeah. That's that's a wonderful way to connect the three generations, yourself, your mother and your daughter, and that she that she responded to it as well. Yes, yes, yes. And the funny thing is my daughter is now um, at university doing Celtic studies. So she's... Uh, ah. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. I wonder if any of her galactic astral alignments correspond to the connection to Druid. Yesterday we talked about also the Acrux and no, sorry, the Corvus. And also yeah. Isar. So Corvus, Algorap Star, and possibly mm -hmm. Izar in Boots. The the two of them or one or the other connects to the Druid lineage. So I wonder if your daughter has these in her chart. Yes, probably. I have Corvus uh, mm. big time. The crows are yeah, um, well, well when I go outside. Yes, yeah. very good. Okay. And then how did you come about the astro when did astrology enter your life and certainly the galactic astrology? How did what was that experience like? Well, it was one of the same. Galactic and astrology and astrology uh, was you. Mm. And the funny thing was a friend of mine just asked me, messaged me, like, oh, you need to see this. It was an interview with uh, with Pam, and I was like, "Okay, I will, I will see it later." And then she again, "No, you need to see this." And I was walking in the park with my dog and while listening. And the funny thing was, I can't remember which star you were talking about with Pam. What at that time? Uh, but I was answering, and I thought that's strange. Why I'm answering? <laughs> so then I immediately the next day I uh, hooked up. Yes, I was. If if that's true that you just you started with astrology recently, whether it's a year or so ago, you have done it in other lives, and you've done it to like a master full level because what you delivered through the readings, from what I saw through your reports, it was so rich in terms of the astrological information. But really, it felt like advanced astrologers reading. So okay. It's, you know, we okay. you are picking up on something from before and it just, you know, that old saying about astrologers, when, when they say, how long do you study astrology? We, we should always say, um, how many lifetimes do you mean? <laughs> because it's not just current oh, life, we really are picking yeah. up on, on yeah. previous. I certainly yeah. remembered my other astrologers' lives in my regression sessions and I had my own experiences. And actually, when I recall them, in my you know hypnotic experience when i was regressed that was my last seventh qhhd session that i had just before i started writing the galactic astrology course remembering those lives as an astrologer and you know mapping uh, the sky and the uh, uncharted lands like writing maps and always looking for the unknown that recall gave me permission to to say yes to this path. I remember that day very distinctly. I actually cried tears of relief for that inner permission to be given, recognizing that actually I'm following the pattern from previous lifetimes and I've got to do it, you know. So I can That's certainly beautiful. recognize through your reports the, the other lifetimes when you were offering some type of divination because it just feels... Oh, yeah, divination, divination for sure, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. Well, is there anything else from your uh, kind of life experience and spiritual journey that you would like to bring into this conversation before I go back to your some of your galactic alignments that I wanted to bring through? Okay. Well, the other thing is is regression. I also did regression. I gave also regression sessions. And uh, the first time I was acquainted with regression was uh, when we as a family went to Indonesia for a couple of months and my parents were joining as well. And I thought, mm, I don't know why, but something is there with the combination of one of my sons and my father. And I need to find out what it is. No idea where it came from because I don't want to have any hassle over there because it probably was linked to uh, Indonesia. So that was the first time I, and there was something there, and it's good that we discussed it. Um, 
And then later, I really wanted to learn more about it and I want to um, actually do it myself. But every time it was, no, it was not the time, it was not the time. And then all of a sudden, a friend of mine came with a book about Black Moon Lilith and it was a Dutch writer. So, and what he wrote, I was, I was fascinated. So I called him and, um, well, we had private sessions. I'm not very good in groups. I'm much better in <laughs> private. <laughs> and that was a very interesting journey as well, especially because I quickly noticed that normally, I don't know what it, what it, if it's with Q, Q, HHD, QHHD, QHHD uh, sessions as well, but people uh, with re- Going into a regression session, they normally go, okay, this is my problem and this is my problem. And that didn't work out. So what I needed to do was simply, okay, I have no idea what your problem is or whatever it is, but I don't know what to expect. Simply lay down and you will see or experience whatever your essence needs yeah, QHHD premise is yeah. like that, that although the client has certain intentions, the the practitioner doesn't actually lead them into certain experiences to resolve those things, but really surrender to higher self deciding where they'll be taken and what will take priority for clearing and resolving. Yeah. yeah. And that is the same way I do uh, regressions as well. So, but that was completely different from QHHD. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good that you're guided to that naturally. Beautiful. Well, when you found yourself diving into galactic astrology, how quickly did you realize that your mind really goes far and wide in terms of not just the planets and then the stars, but you have taken yourself on a journey even beyond that to other galaxies. So for the viewers, Uh, Joyce many months ago actually um, sent me an email with a beautiful gift surprise of a PDF document um, in style of what I've prepared for certain selected stars for our community but you have um, you have developed astrological sorry you have calculated astrological degrees of many messier objects galaxies nebulas Uh, black holes that you were curious about like some did they start coming through client sessions where you felt that there was something else there or you just wanted to have the data there in case uh, it's coming up how did that happen uh, well it it uh happened because of i was looking at hercules and monoceros i wrote to you about it as well and how these two uh, are linked. So I was uh, on my journey about the Gemini, Monoceros and Hercules and uh, Corona Borealis. Do I say it? Yes. 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 So I was on my journey there and there was one, uh, there's one more linked to uh, Gemini, which is Lynx. And there's nothing much about Lynx. So I was just looking at links and what kind of object. And there was one, I think it was called the Intergalactic Traveler or something like that. I thought, what? So then I wanted to find out, okay, what are the coordinates of that? And that kept me going like, I want to know all of these. Yeah. So links has brought me there. Yeah. Amazing. Yes, so you then beautifully incorporated some of these um, less known and studied objects into your clients' readings, or at least the three uh, sample reports that you sent me. There were, um, you know, galaxies that we, I've never seen others talk about, and quite incredible stories came through that deeply resonated with your clients. There was beautiful validation and through their everyday life experience uh, so I just I just feel so excited yeah. when I when we connect with you, Joyce. And it's it's more and more uh, coming up. Some of them hardly have uh, any known for us, 
Uh, for me, it's also uh, every time it's a completely new journey. And it also depends on uh, the client and the essence and their essence on how things are shown. So yesterday I was uh, working on a galactic astrology result um, and there was hardly any alignments except for Pleiades and things like that. But they were telling me that uh, she is a hybrid, but not, uh, this is her first Earth experience. And all the others were from completely different galaxies. And they showed me the information, not in a way like uh, I normally um, just experience it, but these were more like into symbols. And it was uh, felt in my body. So I was shown symbols. So every time it's a completely new experience. I love it. Well, I think it's such a beautiful manifestation, your expanded states of experiences um, as you're tapping into cosmos through your clients' soul records and their galactic charts. The fact that your Mercury is conjunct Shapley attractor very tightly. So you have Mercury in Scorpio and you also have Neptune in Scorpio in 12th house uh, conjunct Alpha Centauri star, our very close neighbor, but really the Shapley attractor, Mercury Scorpio in 10th house, I think is has fingers in why you are able to bring through information out of thin air, unheard before. It's like this is the this is what black holes are like, and certainly Shapley attractor. Um, so yeah, it's um, it the exciting thing as well, I think, is uh, we work with a lot of it's very good that we that we know okay this system has certain kind of traits yeah like pleiadian have traits and alpha centauri has traits and things like that on the other side i think what i am called to is not to have certain traits and just be um, uh, completely open to the other galaxy of all the different experiences that they are. So there's no definition yet. You understand what I'm uh, yes, saying? Yes, hundred percent. Yes, and we we keep uh, continue to say that more and more so because it really opens us up to new information that is so ready to come through. So one more. Um, kind of validation to why you are wired this way. What you just said there is your Uranus in Libra in the ninth house conjunct supergalactic center, which is all about, you know, again, another black hole and Uranus, which is, um, there are no limits <laughs> to what can happen. And yeah. in the ninth house, like new horizons, it's right there. And of course, you have actually a few other conjunctions to really powerful stars too. So absolutely i love that just today somebody sent me a snippet from a recording i did with elena danan i think that was the last video we did together where we just talked about how we are seeing souls coming not just from other star systems but truly from many other galaxies and she was saying that that that's the message that she continues getting so it's beautiful yeah. to see how we are very quickly accelerating um our ability to tap into these other worlds and bring the information through and somehow related to our current experience. Because people who come to the quantum soul guidance <clears throat> practitioners and that's the type of information they receive, they're, they've got to be ready to receive something like that. And if it's not meant to come through yet, then it will not. There'll be uh, information from more uh, kind of closer um, stars or uh, past lives on earth that will come through that's kind of the beauty of the quantum soul guidance where there is something right. higher uh, of higher intelligence that guides us to what's most important at this time yes and as long as we stay open anything is possible mm. and what i learned um or was reminded of is it's we always have like the humans if we don't know it our mind tries to how do you say translate it mm -hmm. in what we find acceptable or don't try to translate it just 
tell what you saw, what was happening, where you felt it. Um, so don't make a, something for yourself to try to un- the client will understand. Mm. They will. <laughs> yeah, that's the challenge of our human language. It will be it will be so amazing language. when we can language. start communicating telepathically through the entire field, passing the information that is really quantum. That would just yeah. be so much easier because we are really degrading it when we are trying to bring it into language because it's so much richer. Yeah. Yeah, language is the most difficult thing to communicate. Yeah. So actually one more really beautiful point that you kind of are bringing through here is for practitioners or for people who are starting who are curious or intrigued by galactic astrology but they really feel like oh my god there is so much information that they need to know but in fact if they can surrender and rather focus on developing their beautiful intuitive skills and really tapping to that divine intelligence inside their being and just starting to practice that way it'll prove to be much more rich and powerful and really unique new stories can start coming through rather than us repeating same old versions of polarity games and other star systems and how it went out. I feel we are really called to uh, develop beyond Eventually, that. what they all are and what we are as well is simply stories. And we know Earth is, is transitioning, so we are transitioning as well. So you better go with the flow and not repeating the same old story. Yeah, and I feel the beauty of the magic that happens also in the interaction between the practitioner and a client is, you know, the practitioner tapping to their frequency for many hours. And in your case, during your practice sessions, you actually happened to spontaneously take several days and you did it in portions. So there is really a lot of energetic investment where we we allow the guides and the records to speak to us we really pay attention because i think the biggest problem with with the spirit guides trying to guide us is that we don't listen we don't take time out of our day to to pay attention to what is wanting to come true whereas the practitioners do that for you i love uh love that you know the amount of time and energy that goes into it because really really rich messages can come true um yeah, I see it as that every client that you have, uh, or actually everything that is going on in your daily life and whoever you meet, is there for a purpose, whether it be you helping them or, but they also, every client has something for you to remember as well. So it's a co-creation. Yes, beautifully said. In terms of your galactic astrology sessions, do you offer different types? Would you like to talk a little bit about what can people expect? What type of session is it written in person? Uh, Zoom calls. Tell us more about it's, that. Uh, it's a Zoom call. It's a Zoom call, and you get the written report with it. So that's it. What galactic astrology? When I was trying to get a grip of it, I just went on looking for myself, just calculating every star that I could find (laughs) for myself, which allowed me to uh, recognize them. I'm all of it. And when you're all of it, everybody is all of it, then it's much easier to uh, not identify oneself with certain kinds of, and that's really, really helpful. So actually um, I do a normal session and it takes me four days, will be 400 euros. And if you want all, all that is, well, then you're going to pay big times. But I can offer that as well. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, that's the yeah. black hole where it's like, bring it on. Yeah, the- want to go down the rabbit hole. The curiosity is just really <laughs> thirsty. Yeah. Your ascendant also is Conjunct Antares, the royal star. Let's see, you have Jupiter... In your 10th house conjunct Arcturus. Not a beautiful, strong connection. So there are so many gems inside yeah, your... Yeah, there's a lot of... Um, I, could, I could see uh, a lot of themes playing out. Because I, I have a lot of them in, in the 10th house. Uh, which also made a lot of uh, sense. Because sometimes I feel more like more ho- male hormones in, in than, than female hormones. Masculine way. Mm-hmm. 
Yes, I was more more in a masculine, and I needed to to learn about uh, female. And in the journey that I took, not only um, here, but it we saw it back also with our goal and everything. All the all my own regressions I had was all about that. I didn't have many much respect for, even though I was a woman in all these lives, I didn't have much respect for women at all. No. It was that cycle of strong masculine frequency on earth. And yes, seem to have lived that. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that was an interesting thing as well. Yeah. Very good. Great how you come back to your wholeness through contrast. There, where there was more than one book written and published by you, where both of them focused on tar on um, Pam reading Hans uh, analysts. No, 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 no. And the first book um, is about witchcraft mm -hmm. in a very simple, and it has faces of the moon and uh, tarot is in it as well. But it's actually a practical learning book. Was it and intended to be something that your daughter can can use? Was it kind of written for that? Oh, reason, or what was your inspiration? She knows it as well. No, I was asked to write it and I didn't want to write it. So this was in November 2019. And then my husband died on the 1st of January in oh, 2020. And then Corona came. Um, so then I the first thing I did after my husband died was said okay and i didn't know that corona was coming but i was say okay i'll write the book so later on i know why i did it because i wanted people to get more in touch with nature and with themselves and so that was why and then i also by the same publisher was a, a moon calendar with a lot of tarot and everything uh, in it and the latest is uh, hand analysis which is what well, came out in july very good so the book contains the kind of basics really for someone who wants to start and learn all yeah. of the basics very and practical then, and yes if you can learn that if you do that just and it's it's very practical. It's only in Dutch. Sorry, it was an, a Dutch publisher, not an English one. For now, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, then you offer um, courses. Is it only in person, where you can people can do like more advanced looking at the hands? I've noticed you uh, hand courses. Anal um, hand analysis. I only do the advanced uh, mm -hmm. ones. I don't do life. Uh, basic because they have the book yeah yeah yes and i do also tarot um but these are the only lessons i give in basics are tarot gotcha. that's the only basic, and that goes further and further and further very good would it be okay with you if i shared your website so we can take a quick glance it's in dutch and i haven't put anything different that's okay on actually google translator like there is this thing where you know, my my uh, browser asks me if I want to translate everything into English and everything is perfect in English on your website. So when okay. people go to joycevannispen.nl for Netherlands, then you can see if you click into automatic translation, you can see the consultations oh. and courses retreats about you um, and all these things. And I just love the style of, of your website too. It's very easy to navigate and uh, the design all of it is really well put together there's a lot on it which um i don't do anymore oh like i don't do any yeah i it's been written in 2018 uh, but i don't do any retreats anymore um okay. i don't do any lessons about um courses about the moon anymore okay so galactic isn't on it yet so if people want to book their session it's ideally to email you and then yes. you liaise about the availability yes. and the prices and things like yes. that perfect because i want to have a, a sense of mm -hmm. i love that yeah okay well is there anything else that you would like to include whether about you about your readings maybe a vision or message that you have for the viewers or current times before we close well what i um discovered in in tarot you also have like the esoteric titles 
which it, nothing is written about it, just the names of the titles. I think it is important that people can relate to what is actually going on to see that they have created this, whether it's something pleasant or your experience it as something unpleasant. Um, when we take the responsibility for that we have created it, it also means we can make a different choice. So to see what is happening and why, ask yourself why you have created this. I'm not really good about it. <laughs> so we cut this part out, Julia. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I'm what I mean? Message. I totally understand it and resonate with it. And I was tapping into the people that say, "Hang on a minute." <laughs> yes, you, you know, you know. Yeah. Uh, I think you can absolutely say that. I would say it'll be better received with taking personal responsibility for how we perceive things or how we respond to what presents itself. Yeah. It's also about responding instead of reacting. Mm -hmm. Yes. So. It can be said often enough. Yes, it's all that. about responding. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I, um, everybody has its own perspective about things. I saw a, a video which made me really laugh, which was a, about a school video. And it were these this boxes, and then you have like a, a square goes in the square and a long one goes in the long one and a round goes in the round. And that is what we do. We, okay, this is the round. This is the square one. This is, and actually everything fits in the square, depending on how you rotate it. And somebody was watching that and goes, like, okay, yeah, this is, this is going into yeah, the round one, the round one. And it goes, eh, very well, it goes in the square. So, and we all get like <gasps> hyper from it. No, 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 it needs to go there. Well, if you know, I mean, the mechanism is the square. Everything fits in the square. So it's not about how you perceive it. Everybody else can perceive it differently. Doesn't mean we have to do that. It fits in the square. Like the ultimate, ultimate reality. Yeah. That is the ultimate reality. Yes. Oh, I love that. Yeah, yeah, it kind of ties in Dolores Cannon's uh, often repeated message that she was getting through her clients' regression sessions that don't take it all so seriously. There is no, the, no. It, it's a no. game. It's, it's a play. For, it is. It reason. is. It is. It's a. It's a game. And another thing is also like the way I see in in three D. We see it as past lives, uh, but it, everything is happening now in this now moment uh, and we look at it if there's a past and a present and a future um, but it's only the present and I know it is difficult for people to for for human brain to get a grasp on that yeah um, I, I, I believe that people who did not experience a regressed state where their brain goes consciously into theta frequency uh, or that a brainwave state if you don't experience it in real like awake consciousness it's like impossible to imagine what it is like to perceive past present and future simultaneously but once you experience that altered state of consciousness in an awake state then mm -hmm. it's like yeah of course it's just like yeah. that's the way it is but it's also in important to to understand that um you can change anything you want in the now not tomorrow not next week no you can do it now if that's what is what you really want yes i i wholeheartedly believe that the thing is then they're you know getting rid of the ob objections or um blocks to it or things that we're holding on to that are, that are not letting us so, yeah. no but well it's nothing is letting us we won't we allow it not yeah, to yeah that absolutely so it's important why do we keep holding on and this is one other thing but for me was also important was to see that we define ourselves by roles so it's not only the 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 roles we have but it's also the um, uh, identification 
with them and we identify also with the stories. So my galactic astrology, I really try to explain as well, these are stories you brought with you. Please don't identify with them. <laughs> and it's nice. I like that. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. This year for me was really strong about releasing them, releasing those identities and attachments. And it feels so much better, so much lighter, uh, especially the eclipses. It really brought that up. It was a tough year. Powerful message. Thank you for bringing that in. No, it's getting a little bit. I'm really curious how the Pluto and Aquarius will feel. We got a glimpses of it and I, I, I just feel really light and excited about the many more expansions and, expansions and possibilities and certainly doing it together as a community just feels really magical. Thank you so much for your wisdom, for your love. It's not mine. It's not Very mine. <laughs> it's not mine. <laughs> I hear it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's been a great pleasure. I'll look forward to staying connected. And I hope you will be able to find time every now and then to share with us the discoveries that are coming through you. Because truly, you know, having the the black holes operating while you are taking time to look at people's charts and soul records and astrology. Like I would love to continue hearing more of your discoveries whenever you will get something exciting, strange and wonderful. Please. Yeah. And I'm, I'm also uh, uh, reluctant to do that uh, simply because um, they are teaching us not to define it as much. They are teaching us to let go of certain ways. Yeah, this is what I'm noticing and the hints that I'm getting lately that I, I find myself, once I share something, it, it it's like it's a passing and it's no longer truth because we are all, we are moving so fast. Exactly. That Just sense is becoming really strong. Mm -hmm. It's information for that particular client at that particular moment in that particular time. That's it. Yeah. I think because otherwise, if I go, oh, this galaxy, this galaxy that far away, I go, to, oh, but the other one had no. <laughs> Could be something completely different. Yeah. Actually, what we are doing here is, um, you know, if, if we think about it, Earth with 8 billion people, we are tuning into one person's fragment of their entire life journey. And then we would label, if we are outside of Earth, we would label that, okay, this is the Earth's story. <laughs> It's so That's silly. Crazy. It's so it silly. Is. It is. It is. It is quite silly. So it's also, but it, it, I mean, uh, if they teach us to let go of certain stories, that is what we are taught now in on earth as well. So the reason why we're more connecting now, we're getting more clients with galaxies and black holes. Yeah, this is earth. Earth is, is like a mother, but it's the same as a mother. She's a black hole as well. I'm, I'm so glad that we can bring this into the conversation and I hope people who manage to watch till the end, they will um, know that oh, as a community, as the quantum soul guidance practitioners, this is something that is becoming more and more obvious to us. So that when, so when you are hearing the videos that I share on, for example, Galactic Astrology YouTube channel, we, we share certain representations of star systems. Um, I started putting in the title that it's a perspective of this person based on their experiences so that we don't really hold on to them too tightly and really, as you said, rather approach when you tune into your soul records or any star system, any uh, location in cosmos, approach it as a blank canvas and let the magic happen in your direct experience with it. Let it be unique for you. Yes. Mm. Yeah. And for me, essence is always um, not even looking at the alignments. Of course, I look at the alignments because getting a, a certain feeling from it. But I let essence decide which one <laughs> they need. And sometimes uh, I have to go web to, to certain websites with just numbers of deep space uh, and just go this one, this one. And it's amazing. It's so thrilling that you can actually, when calculated, that you can see, oh, yes, of course. It's there. For <laughs> it's the viewers yeah. who might not know the what we are talking about when you say essence, it's part of the quantum soul guidance um, 
process is looking at the soul essence. What is the frequency before we start adding all the labels of where the soul went and what they experienced? So we tune in either through color or other sensations based on the extrasensory models. And one another new thing, new experience that I've witnessed through you was that you were guided to look at the essence from different perspectives in space so what will the hue be like through colors if you look at that soul through the sun or from the sun's perspective or from black holes perspective yeah. and that was showing yeah, differently yeah, yeah. yeah that was also uh funny yeah so i i see it every time as a as, as something oh well show me i will see what's happening and try not to get my a uh, physical hat to involve to try to understand it yes <laughs> beautiful including all yeah. perspectives and let it go after it that too yeah. what a gift thank you so much joyce it's such a pleasure thank connecting you. with you i hope the conversation will serve our viewers and that i'll feel inspired to connect with you thank you all for watching and we'll see you again next time thank much you love. Bye. much love bye bye